and welcome to this series of case studies and experiments using PicoScope. That's uh, PicoScope software and also NBH as well. So that's in the Pico diagnostic software. Um, it, it really follows cases that I, I feel no other tool would have got us out of trouble, would have helped us diagnose conclusively what the, what the problem was. In some cases, you don't end up with a diagnosis. You know exactly the depth of repair required and to actually repair is beyond economical repair. Nevertheless, you've got that evidence that, that stops those awful incidents happening where it's an awkward discussion or it just becomes a scrap vehicle. In most cases, or it can be that that is the case. Uh, this is a uh, Saab 93 Aero. Uh, this again had a, uh, a chain issue, it's another vehicle. Uh, I just wanted to share the technique, uh, another little experiment if you like, and that was adapting our WPS 500 presser transducer for cylinder leakage. So you see in this little diagram here, we've got a tap where we can feed in shop air. Uh, we can then close off that air and then just monitor the decay of um, pressure within the cylinder and what I've done here in scope view one we've got cylinder one and then I've used reference waveforms and imported them into scope view uh, so we'll have cylinder two in the red cylinder three in the magenta and cylinder four in purple and notice that I've uh, allowed seven bar of pressure into the cylinder close the tap off and then use the trigger to trigger as we get the decay and there is a natural decay in all cylinders, there will be, and you can clearly see it here. And these are now good cylinders. We can categorically say these are good. And I think between them, we have a fall time of around about five and a half seconds, with the best cylinder being cylinder four at six seconds. So a nice feature, um, perhaps another way of using WPS that we hadn't considered, the real nice feature of this is when you're doing cylinder leakage, you need to determine when your valves are closed or closing. When you've got WPS in the cylinder and you've got your tap closed here, as you rotate the engine, you'll see the pressure start to build up because you're graphing pressure against time. As soon as that pressure starts to build, the only way that can build is when the valves are closed. So a nice little um, beneficial side effect, should we say. Okay, so this one, um, I think we'll agree it's low compression. This is an engine non-start. And uh, let's just look at peak pressure. Always read these diagrams from left to right. So starting at TDC, peak pressure, top of the compression tower, we've got 0.4 bar. I think we're in agreement this has low compression. Um, cylinder head has to come off, or does it? Let's, um, let's grab some more information from this capture. Uh, just look how deep our expansion pocket is. Um, almost negative one bar, which is an immense negative pressure. Um, we can determine here that our exhaust valve is opening in the correct position. It's at a 100, 145 degrees before bottom dead center because our pressure then rises up to atmospheric. We don't have a blocked exhaust, or we, we have buffeting, but we don't appear to have any back pressure at this point in time, which is great. We then seem to have an event here where, and it looks to be on time where the inlet valve is closing, or is it closing? Is it actually not opening? We've got this deep dish effect here, haven't we? We've got this huge intake pocket and no real clean cut point where we transition from the intake pocket onto compression, which would be the closing of the inlet valve. So look out for that deep dish effect there. And it also matches almost the expansion pocket there. Again, a massive 988.4 uh, millibar negative. That's a huge negative pressure. And keep your eyes peeled on this one. This should give us the answer. So just keep focused on the camshafts. And there they are. So which valve was opening at the right time? It was the exhaust. The exhaust cam was turning. Let me just play that again. Have a look at the inlet cam on the right hand side. 
yeah, no drive on the inlet cam. So the inlet cam is not turning. If the inlet cam is not turning, the inlet valve won't be opening. And if the inlet valve will not open, we cannot pull in air. If we don't pull in air, we cannot generate compression.